Ayurvedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the April overview. Happy Nowruz for our Persian community, people who are in the Persian community. I discovered this thing of Happy Nowruz. I didn't know what it was and I was doing some research on the BBC because I was matching up the news items with what's been happening astrologically and as I was doing that little matchup, I came across this term Happy Now Ruse and I'm like, wow, I have to find out what that's about. And it turns out it's the Persian New Year and how perfect is that? We've got the uh, spring equinox, 20th March. I'm recording this today, Sunday evening. It is the 24th of March. So I'll be uploading it probably on the Monday or Tuesday. If I'm uploading it on the Monday, how was your weekend? I hope you all had a good weekend. I've had a bit of a busy weekend. I've been working uh, on, on, on this and I was putting my notes together for this yesterday and I've got quite a lot going on. So if you'd like to catch up with what I've been up to, you can click on channel news. I think that's what I'll call it in the links below. And before I get to channel news, I've got um, two things that I'd like to go through and there's quite a lot to cover this time. I'm also going to be spending a little bit more time on the mini readings. Uh, that is something I definitely want to do because we are beginning the new year astrologically uh, when the sun moves into Aries, you know, and that's happening on the 14th. I'm pretty sure that is right. 14th April. Yes, absolutely. So it's a new year. It's a new astrological year. It's really, really exciting. And I think without further ado, I am just going to jump straight into the news because the recent news, I wanted to do an astrological matchup of what's been going on. I have done some research uh, this time. Normally there'll be like one or two news articles that I will match up astrologically. This time there is a list that I've got in front of me of more than looking at about nine items here or well you could say you could kind of group them and say seven so a lot has been going on and I think last time in March I said that it was going to be well let's actually go back to January I think in January I said that March was going to be a really exciting month astrologically uh, and then I think for the actual March overview I felt really guided and inspired just to say that, look, this is going to be a very quiet month, but things will start to change around the 23rd. Now, it's really interesting because that's actually what happened for me in my life. Things were very quiet, especially for those first two weeks. Um, the early part of March was quite quiet, although I've got a news article here, which is early March, but we'll get into that in a moment. Um, but most of March was very quiet for me. It was, it started to get a bit busy last week. I had to take my website down because I've had a lot of readings. I've had a lot of work on. Uh, I've had a lot to do. I'm going to be traveling soon. So I have a lot of admin. I have a lot of things I've had to wrap up and organize and do. So it's all kind of culminated and it, it did become very busy for me last week. Um, but when I look back at my month, I mean, it was a really quiet month and visually my life looked the same. It was kind of Groundhog Day. It was kind of the same that it's been over the last two years. Not much happened for me, but my goodness, I have to do an astrological matchup of the news because a huge amount happened in the world. And let's just start matching them up right now. Let's just go through all of these dates. So Rahu Ketu shift, if you were using the mean node, you've got 7th of March. If you're using the true node like I do, I always use the true node. And when I match it up with my life this last month, absolutely. So I, one of the things I did, this was on Friday. Um, that was the last set of emails I had with the psychiatric clinic that I've been working with. And I'm wrapping that up. I won't be doing that anymore. And I'm just going to be doing this full time. So... Obviously, I'm really excited just to be doing this full time. Uh, and if you go on my website, you'll notice that it's down. It will be back up again on the 14th of April, but I'll go into that in the channel news section. So we'll talk about that there. 
so we've got Rao Ketu shift, 7th of March, 23rd of March, that definitely 23rd of March suits my life and all the events of my life really perfectly. But we'll have a look at this 7th of March thing because it's interesting. Then we've got Gandanta dates, right? So Gandanta is March 14th to May 8th. And look at this March 14 date. It's absolutely stunning what's going on here. So I didn't do a Gandanta video. I had some questions about it. Um, and I'll tell you what happened. I knew about it. I did. I thought about it when I was constructing the March outlook. I knew about it. But then I thought, you know what? I don't want to... Um, I don't want to worry people. And we'll get into that. There will be another section after this news matchup called, I'm going to call it something like my philosophy on predictions. I'll talk about that there. Okay, so let's just stick with the news because I know that you guys like to jump around and watch the bits you're interested in. So let's match up all these news articles. So we have Gandanta, March 14. Let's take a look at this. 10th of March, uh, BBC, I saw an article, India Pakistan airstrikes. Okay, there was that bit of news there. I've got a date, 11th of March, Reuters, Ethiopian Airlines crash, flight ET302. Uh, I've got a date here, 13th March, New York Times, Afghan army base is wiped out by US airstrikes. And I have grouped these three together because yes, these have a feel of Gandanta, but they also have a feel of Rahu in Gemini, amplified by Gandanta. Why Rahu in Gemini? Because these three are all air, right? So we've got Afghan army base wiped out by airstrikes, Indian Pakistan airstrikes, Ethiopian Open Airlines crash. So these news items, you know, if you're a pro um, mean node, they're, they're, you know, you might want to see it in that way. Uh, let's have a look at pure Gandanta. I thought these three were just pure Gandanta. So 16th March, CNN, 50 killed, 50 wounded in New Zealand. Um, gosh, that was a big bit of news, but there's a lot more bigger news uh, than just that. We have uh, 22nd March, CNN, 557 lives lost, but I'm putting down here hundreds of lives lost. That's the cyclone, Idai, Mozambique. There's also the 18th of March, independent um, Dutch city of Utrecht shooting, three killed. Um, so there's a lot of eruption and activity happening. And to me, those three, this thing of uh, the New Zealand, the Dutch city of Utrecht and cyclone in Mozambique, to me, these are just pure Gandanta. Um, that's what I'm seeing there with those. And then we've got Saturn Ketu conjunction. Now I'm classing these as Saturn Ketu conjunction. And, you know, let me know what you think if you think otherwise. The Michael Jackson thing, and I haven't got any dates on this one. I ran out of time today. I apologize. But I've grouped these three together. There was Michael Jackson uh, leaving Neverland story. Oh, well, that actually, I did look that one up just before I managed to, to look that one up. Now, this one, the, the documentary came out. It might still be up on my screen as well. Um, no, it's not. Uh, unfortunately, I keep looking up all these different things but I'm pretty sure that the, the documentary came out on the 3rd and 4th in the United States and I think it came out on the um, on the 5th and 6th here in the United Kingdom and that's kind of interesting because that one just slipped in before the you know the the, the Rahu Ketu axis is shifting and then whoosh this little Michael Jackson thing they just got it through before you know the the shift happened if you're counting it as being the 7th of March. Um, you know, again, a lot of compelling arguments for, for the 7th of March, but I still believe that the 23rd, I still believe true node is the better one to use. And that's from my personal experience. That's also from working with clients and rectifying and doing all that kind of work. Uh, I've just seen that one work better. But, you know, the Michael Jackson thing, again, that's, a, that's an interesting one. But I've, I've grouped these three together. So it was Michael Jackson, there was George Pell, huge bit of news right there, and R. Kelly. I'm grouping these guys together and I'm calling that or, or matching that up to Saturn Ketu conjunction because these are ongoing things and these are going to be looked at 
you know, over time, over the next few months, or definitely Michael Jackson and George Pell. Um, this is Saturn Ketu. Why is it Saturn Ketu? Because it's digging up the past or it's materializing the past. Um, these are very much things of, of digging up the past and Saturn has a real charge on honesty. That's what he wants. He wants everyone to be 100% honest. I always think that people ask me, how do I get through my sarisate? I always say, do two things. Be honest with yourself and others and self-love. So love yourself and, and love others too, but definitely honesty and love. And, and a lot of people maybe don't associate the word love with Saturn, but um, he, he, is, he is about love. You know, it's, it's a, maybe a more practical and real and grounded type of love, but he is about love. Um, you know, I, th I do think Saturn can be quite misunderstood and misjudged sometimes. So this is, these are the news articles that I really wanted to match up. Um, Gandanta. The other thing I wanted to say about Gandanta is a lot of people think it's a bad thing. And, and one of the things, that's why I didn't mention it in the March outlook. I didn't m mention it. And this, is, this will all lead into my philosophy on predictions. Well, I kind of think we're there now. Um, why not? Yeah, we'll start this so that there'll be a jump link for my philosophy on predictions. And basically, the reason I didn't talk about this in the March one was because was because I don't particularly want to alarm people. You know, I think um, I've watched many Gandantas happen and people make these big, huge predictions and then nothing much goes on. I have seen that, so that's why I didn't think about mentioning it this time, but I will mention it going forward. Don't worry, I will. Um, but I think it's worth talking about my philosophy on predictions and how I do this work because I've been thinking about it a lot over this past month. And when I was watching the news about um, you know, the people uh, killed in, in New Zealand, I actually wrote down a quote by the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, and I wanted to read this quote so that this will be a nice tie into my philosophy on predictions. So basically he said, there is a responsibility on all of us to be very careful in the language we use and the messages we amplify. And I heard him say that and I went, wow, because I was like, that. I think about that a lot. And... I'm very careful about the words I use and I'm careful about the messages that I amplify. And, you know, as an astrologer, it's a really interesting thing. If you see something negative, do you say, right? And, you know, it's, um, it's really interesting how all of this works. And I've got two notes on my, two points to make on my philosophy on predictions. One is, that I'd rather be wrong about a positive prediction than be right about a negative one. Now, that requires a bit of contemplation. I'd rather be wrong about a positive prediction than right about a negative one. Contemplate that thought. Here's how I view that thought and here's how it operates in my life. It's, it's this concept of it, well, it's to do with ego, really, isn't it? You know, it's um, it's definitely to do with ego. Because let's say, for example, I predict World War Three is going to happen next week, right? Now, a lot of me doesn't want that to happen. But the ego part of me that's connected with being an astrologer wants to be right. Do you know what I mean? So there, there is some ego because it's like, well... I predicted it, I want it to be right. But of course I don't want it to be right. Like, do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like we, we are creating the future together. And, you know, it's a really interesting thing because if, if this was all just pure destiny and we're just clockwork, we're just part of, and you can just exactly predict every single move, 
there'd be no point of being here. We do have free will. You know, we, we definitely have some free will here. So how do I use my free will as an astrologer who's representing this system of sidereal Vedic astrology, which I love? Um, you know, so yes, I believe in it and yes, I use it. But at the same time, we do have free will. And, you know, a big part of my job is encouraging people to use their free will in conjunction with the universe, right? We're team players, right? We work with the universe. We work with our angelic teams. We work with each other on the planet. We have free will, you know, and we have choice. And a large part of what I want to do through this channel is be empowering and uplifting and motivating. And, you know, I don't particularly want to do too much um, doom and gloom because you look at my last month my last month where as I'm telling you hardly anything happened I just got a bit busy last week you know um, one exciting thing happened I tried a vegan sausage roll for the first time at Greg's that was really exciting and um, I actually had a friend of mine she sent me a text it was the most wonderful thing in the world she she um, sent me a brochure on the text to visit her mosque and I felt so proud. I felt so good. It was the first time someone had invited me. I, I've never been invited to a mosque. I've never been to one. I can't wait to go. And I said to her, look, when I get back from my trip, I will come. I'll come with you and your family. I would love to do that. So for me, that was a real honor. So that was an exciting thing that happened in my month. But you can, you can see, you know, um, the prediction of it being a quiet month last month was absolutely true for me you know but it, it wasn't true for any of the people involved in in all of these you know the, the, the massive amount of news um, that came out of last month it was a huge amount of news and uh, so many so many bits to to match up so yeah the other part of my philosophy on predictions is that um this was the other point that i wanted to make so the first was i'd rather be wrong about a positive prediction than right about a negative one and and on that by the way i will i will say that i, I do work with people who ask me controversial things or difficult things or i've had women come to me asking about childbirth i've had um you know people come and look if if there's you know, sometimes there might be negative information. I am a representative of the system. I'm a messenger. So I do have to relay the messages as I see them, right? So, and that, that, that's not an easy job. And, and I think there is an art of doing that with diplomacy and with care and with consideration for people's feelings. And, you know, um, and it is this thing that Mayor Sadiq Khan said. He said, there is a responsibility on all of us to be very careful in the language we use and the messages we amplify. Absolutely. I'm very um, conscious of all of this. And I'm conscious of being an accurate representative of the system as well. So, so, so there's that point of my philosophy on predictions. And the other point I wanted to make, which I've got written down here, is that I'm not anti-darkness, but I am pro-light. Now, that is an interesting concept as well because this concept of being not anti-darkness and some people will be like well how what how can you don't you hate some things or detest some things or you know and well sure I mean look some things are really bad yeah absolutely but it's like you, you don't want to get sticky or stuck or because um, sometimes those low vibrations can be sticky and you can get stuck in there and and then then you're not able to help as much. And uh, I'm very pro-light, you know, whatever's light and good and I want to be there, you know, and I want to encourage everyone through this channel to, to enjoy the light and to we've got to lift our vibrations and be part of the solution and not part of the problem. So um, that's just a little bit there on my philosophy on predictions uh, a couple of other news things that I wanted to state the Michael Jackson thing I will just talk very briefly about it I watched um, I have watched so much 
there was like a weekend where I was just obsessed and I watched something like, I don't know, 100 videos in a row uh, about that. I watched Taj Jackson defending his uncle. I watched Brandy Jackson. She's amazing. I watched a lot of um, old clips by Tom Macero and I'm going to put a link to him below. I think he is outstanding and uh, he talks about trial by media. He talks about a lot of really interesting things. So do check him out if you're keen to get into that case. I had a look astrologically. I brought up a lot of different charts of a lot of different people and um, I, I do have a personal opinion on that. I'll share my personal opinion. I think I don't think he did anything like that. Mind you, I haven't watched the documentary yet. I will watch it. Um, of course I'll watch it. That is the kind of thing that when I coach people, people do talk to me about this kind of thing. So it's um, not unfamiliar to me at all. I, I know all this kind of thing and uh, I work with people in that capacity I, I you know and, I, and truth needs to be told of course uh, and I know the whole thing about narcissists being extremely charming and that's how they get away with stuff and sure yeah so I mean look even knowing all of that I, I don't think he um, I, I actually think he's innocent there's a there's a couple of astrological things but who knows maybe I might do that as a little case study um, down the track I might go into that one uh, what I had a quote here by Swami Vivekananda who said truth can be stated in a thousand different ways yet each one can be true I thought that was just such a beautiful quote and I think you know yeah I mean it could be maybe he did do some such things uh, I'm not 100% sure but I'm very much um, on the side of Taj Jackson Brandy Jackson and you got to listen to Tom Macero. He's just amazing. And I know he's talking about a very old case, but this is a very old case and it's sat in Ketu and it's being dug up and look at that, it's coming out again. So, um, you know, also if you have a little look, uh, if you have a little peek into his chart, he does have a Ketu Mars conjunction and I know people with that conjunction and they are perfecting the art of fighting. I know something about these people that you, you do not want to go into a fight with them because they're usually right. And I, I really, I believe in Tom Macero a lot. So I, I think he knows um, some truths about the build of the media and the build of the world and why this thing is happening. Dave Chappelle also did a terrific comedy um, stand-up thing where he was saying that every time there's something going on in the media, they'll bring out an MJ story. So say, for example, um, what's that guy, Weinstein, was supposed to have a case and uh, that got delayed and instead we're all talking about MJ. So, you know, we've got to ask some questions here. We've got to dig deeper and we've got to really do our research. It's a really fascinating one. And if you're, you know, an astrological student and you're wanting to build your intuition, uh, this is a terrific one to get into because there are many different players and you can bring up their charts and have a look and, and start to refine what you think uh, is going on there. The other couple of little news bits I wanted to bring up were, of course, so I've quoted Maya Sadiq Khan. Um, I did look for quotes, Jacinda Ardern, I mean... I could quote her for a whole hour, so I'm not going to do that, but there is just so much great publicity about her. She has emerged as this incredible world leader and, I mean, my goodness, what a star. And, and that's Gandanta. That's what I wanted to say about Gandanta, that um, I am going to need this after all. I was wondering if I was going to need this, and indeed I do. Whoops, I'm just kind of messing up my desk there. But what do we have here? We've got fire. Let's take a look at this. So Gandanta, fire. Where are, oh, I'm sorry, I've drawn this a bit badly, haven't I? Fire. Okay, let's just make that out. Well, there's Gandanta happening right there. And then we've got this, and then we've got this. So these are our firehouses, and this is where we are right now. And we're, we're nav navigating Jupiter's hanging out here, and he's crossing this point, and all this explosive activity and energy, and, and look at what's going on. Apologies, guys, the camera got cut, as it does at the 24-minute mark. So 
where was I? I think I was here and I think I was talking about the explosive energy of Gandantha and I was talking about Jacinda Ardern and I was saying that she's emerged victorious as this amazing world leader. And that what I really wanted to say is that if you've got um, <clears throat> if you've got planets at around this point, and sometimes people worry, they think, oh no, my planet is very close to this point and is that bad? And does that mean my life is always going to be in turmoil? No, no, absolutely not. I was watching um, one of the astrologers and I'm always watching many astrologers and, and somebody had said this thing about this is a really terrific place in many ways if you have planetary energy because leaders emerge from here you know and and that's what I see we have water here and we've got fire whoops here we've got all this fire here and the reason I brought up all the firehouses is because when you look at the firehouses right they are what's going on what's what's common to uh, all three of these well performance right performance people perform actors pe performance creativity but leadership it's it's performance in leadership right so it's like getting up on a stage and talking and you're governing governing right government government here too uh, leadership though Aries the leader you know there's these are performance and leadership houses where you need fire fire has to be seen so it's like and fire is seen and yeah people who have if you're if you've got planets here and you're kind of worried about it or if you're thinking about it just know that there's all right yes you might experience some challenges or some problems but equally where there's chaos you can rise up as a leader you know where there's chaos there's a job to be done, you know, or there's, there's work to be done and there's an opportunity there for you to really rise up as a leader. And that's exactly what I see um, Jacinda Ardern has risen up in that ninth house fire. She's on the world stage. She is being talked about constantly and by everybody, by all countries. Everyone's quoting her. Everyone's saying, oh, look at that. She got guns banned in six days. You know, it's just incredible and 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 people are saying that you know why why you know, she's done it so quickly why can't we do it yeah, of course everybody can do it everybody can ban guns you know and it's about time uh, that, that we got on and, and did some of these things uh, a couple of sort of light light-hearted sort of things Magda Zabanski in Australia I saw a tweet by her this morning she's absolutely brilliant she said um, she said I'm going to coin a new phrase she said that we all need to arden up and I thought, oh, that's just genius, you know. So anytime, like, so people say it can't be done. And I mean, look, she banned guns in six days. So, you know, it, it, I, I'm always inspired by these. I'm pretty sure it's six days. Don't quote me on that one. I, I vaguely remember it as I was looking through the Facebook news feed this morning. So um, it's something like that. It's a very short duration, you know. And I always get inspired by things like that. Like Frank Lloyd Wright designed falling water in three hours. So when I have a three-hour block of time, I think to myself, well, that guy, he designed a whole house that's like world famous. What can I do in three hours? You know what I mean? In six days. What can we do in six days? You know, like... These things are very inspirational. So on, on a lighter note, um, Magda Zbanksky, Arden Up. I just thought that was so clever. That should be a part of every country's colloquial language now. And the other thing I wanted to point you to, which I saw on Facebook this morning, that just made me laugh so much. It is so good. I'll put a link to it below. Check it out. It's Brexit yoga. And those of you who like yoga will enjoy this. Those of you who are keeping up with um, the Brexit news and what's going on here in Europe, you will like this. It's just, if you need to laugh, I completely understand. And check out Brexit yoga and it will really uh, make you laugh, I reckon. It's really, really funny. Stick with it. The first, like the first, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds or first minute or whatever, you're kind of going, what's going on? But like when he gets into the United Kingdom and then I think he goes into, what is it, the European Union or something, it gets really funny from there. Just stick with it. It's hilarious. So do check that out. Okay, I'm going to do channel news and then we're going to get straight into the readings. So channel news, I'm going to be really brief here, guys. This is just really quick. I'm telling you what's going on with the channel. Um, 
by the way, I should have probably done this at the start, but because it's April, I'm just all go, go, go. And like, so I didn't get into this. But I wanted to say welcome to all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining. And please, if you haven't already subscribed, um, remember to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification button so that you'll be notified as to when a new video arrives. And um, of course, you can interact with the like and dislike buttons. And please do feel free to comment below. I absolutely love reading all of your comments. And uh, I, of course, love replying to your comments and, and getting involved in all that. Um, sometimes I might not be able to respond to a comment. Uh, also, emails. I am having a bit of trouble responding to my emails at the moment. I've got a lot going on. I'm quite busy. So if, um, if you don't hear from me, just know I'm on the case or I will be getting back to you at some point. Uh, comment wise, I may not be able to respond, but um, know that I read every single thing and it, all of your writing flows into my creativity. So always remember that, you know, you're very much a part of this channel and what you have to say matters to me a lot. Uh, the other bit of channel news is that this is going to be the last time I do this particular style of setup in this particular location. So I'm going to be traveling very soon uh, as of well, in a few days time. I'm going to be on my way. I'm going to be on a plane. So uh, it's not quite the Rahu bus. It's the Rahu Airbus more like or maybe it's a Boeing. I don't know. It'll be something and it'll be taking me all the way to Australia and you guys are coming with me. Uh, if I was the Oprah Winfrey show, I would be flying all of you guys and John Travolta would be the pilot and it would be amazing, but I haven't got that kind of budget. So that won't be happening, but um, we are going to Australia and I will, of course, make some cool videos out there and I'm going to be doing outdoor and I'm going to be doing, uh, actually, I'm just going to be doing probably mostly outdoor. Um, so these monthly bits might be outdoor as well. Everything might be outdoor. I actually don't know at this time. Maybe I might do something indoor. I, I have to figure it out. I actually don't know where on earth. Um, well, I know I'll be at my mum's, but like, I, I don't know. I have no idea. I, I put a note here to say that I will be working every day. Uh, there's a university library near where I live. It's a very professional environment for me to work in, which is fantastic. And I kind of need that because when you work from home, as much as I've been doing lately, um, it can be a bit... I don't know what it is you just I, I've got a bit of cabin fever something like that you just kind of get a bit nah, I want to go somewhere so that's also partly why I'm uh, doing this because then I'll be able to work from a, a nice professional environment which I'm excited about uh, I've got a note here the website will go live again from 14th April onwards um, partly because I need a little bit of a break as well I've been working really hard doing a lot um, I will be working a little bit each day up until the 14th but there will be uh, I do need to adjust to jet lag a little bit so I'll, there's going to be a two or three days where I'm just totally out and um I'm quite looking forward to that actually. Uh, you always sleep well on the, you know, I, I always do the whole jet lag thing where you, you stay up till 9 p.m. their time and you don't look at the time back home and that's the way you do it. So and it can be really hard to stay up on that first day but I'll, I'll make that happen. Uh, I will be doing readings of course as usual. I'm going to be They'll all be the same, all the readings will be the same. I might be taking the written reading down. So um, that written reading option, uh, I might take it down, I might not. I'll see how I go. Um, but know that October onwards, when I come back here, the full suite of readings will be on. Um, yeah, I've got a note here, this whole format will change. Yeah, I've also got a note here, limited wardrobe. So um, today, well, today I'm wearing yellow in honor of the sun, uh, the sun being exalted in Aries, so it's very exciting. So I had to wear yellow. Um, but over there, I'm gonna have probably just very limited wardrobe. Like I'll be wearing like the same turtleneck in every video or something, you know? So, but how I'm gonna make up for that is, um, the scenery will change every time. So visually it will always be something interesting to look at. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm pretty plain anyway, but um, yeah, but the scenery is going to be different. Was there anything else I wanted to say with channel news? I think that was about it. I think that's kind of summed it up and I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to traveling. I haven't been home for quite a while and uh, it's just going to be great. And, uh, you know, finally I'm going to be back in a place where my, where my accent makes sense again. So, you know, that's always good. Mind you, I always get mistaken for people think I'm English. And, and what it is, is everybody thinks I'm English. 
And then when I told them, oh, I, actually, I'm originally from Australia, and they go, oh, I thought there was a slight twang. Everyone calls it a twang. So I'm like, so I have a twang. All right. Well, guys, I think I'm going to get on with the mini readings now. So I think what I'm going to do is I have I covered everything here. Yeah, I feel like I have. There's been a lot of news. I mean, what can I say? All right, let's just let's get into these mini readings. I'm going to going to put this away and I'm going to bring this a bit closer so that we can get all right, we can get stuck in. I don't think I'm going to be needing the whiteboard. No, I think we're all good. All right. So, I'm going to welcome Aries Moon. Aries Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to kick this off by talking about Sun, Mars, Venus and Mercury. These are the first ones that I'm going to be talking about. If you'd like to know more about Rahu Ketu Axis or Saturn Ketu Conjunction, you can have a look. Um, go back in the videos and you'll find that I have talked about those in some more depth. But let's take a look really at April. This is the exciting news that I've pulled out for April. So for you, we've got Sun in the first house. Uh, let's have a look at this. 14th April onwards. So now is this a good transit for you? It's not bad, you know. Um, I've got a note here, be careful with your health. And it's not a great time to accelerate projects at work. Now I know we have um, sun in Aries. I'm actually just going to bring this up while I've got you here, Aries moon. I don't often bring up the transit charts, but you're very lucky. I might end up spending some extra time with you uh, in my little mix sessions. How about that? Uh, um, I think I got that phrase from Fraser actually. Let's have a look here. So what are we talking? Yes, it is indeed Aries, of course it is. And I mean, you know, there's an excitement about that. There's, oh, fantastic. Sun in Aries, sun's exalted. Sun is exalted, but because it's in your first house, the, the way that all kind of matches up you, you you are going to need to be a little bit careful with your health and um, as I say here not a great time to accelerate projects at work let's take a look at Mars in your second house that this is an ongoing thing this has been this will happen the whole month and this is you just need to be a little bit careful here too um, careful with your speech careful with work matters look after your health be careful with friends Okay, so there's just some care to be taken there with Mars. Mars can be a bit strong uh, and aggressive in this house. So it's just about taking a bit of extra care. Uh, do we have some good news? We do. 16th April onwards, Venus is strong here for you. So we're going to have a Venus-Mercury conjunction happening in your 12th house. So in a way, this is terrific for art and artistic projects and, and, and being in that dreamscape and um, maybe you're being creative with, well maybe you're being creative with your life and you're in that highly spiritual beautiful place of like dreaming up a better future for yourself but it's the dreaming part that's good, not so much acting on anything right now but dreaming right, so we've got Venus is strong here for you, great time to meet someone new with this Venus transit so if you're single, get out and mingle. Uh, good time for art, being imaginative, yeah, escaping through some kind of artistic project. And that is a beautiful thing to do. If you feel the need for escape, sometimes we can't afford to take a holiday, but we can always afford to lose ourselves in some form of creativity. You know when you just, oh, and I get this sometimes when I'm making a little film for my YouTube or something like that. I've started doing this um, master series. I love making those films because it's kind of arty and, you know, not as many people watch them, but it doesn't matter. I like it. So that's my escape, you know. So um, you could escape through some kind of artistic project. Also, when I fire up Photoshop, I just like to, you know, I escape through that. So, so yeah, do, do try out being artistic or creating something or being creative in that way. Uh, I've got a, just a little check-in note here. I know I did just refer you to, over to the Rahu video, but just a little check-in and a reminder, you have Rahu in the third. Good on you. Uh, see how that energy, now we're kind of merging into it now, aren't we? Let's have a look. 24th, absolutely. So 
this is new for you, this energy, but start to observe, notice the shift, notice, okay, what has just wrapped up for me recently in my life? What thing has come to a close and, and, and what do I feel like doing now? And, you know, do you feel like traveling? Do you feel like going somewhere? Might be a good time to, to start thinking about that. Um, let's take a look at the new moon. New moon's happening in your 12th house and that's on the 5th of April. That's Pisces, Revati Nakshatra. A uh, terrific time to plant a seed regarding your spirituality. Perhaps you might want to ask yourself, and this is a beautiful energy, you might want to ask yourself the question, if you had a spiritual superpower, what would it be? And then wish for that. Now, I was thinking about this concept of spiritual superpower and what does that mean? And I started thinking about what would I wish for? And I thought, you know, the simpler the better like what can I master that's really simple like forgive myself can I forgive myself can I be easy on myself can I be kind to myself you know these can be hard things to do sometimes um, what if that was my spiritual superpower what if I found it easy to do that and you know my life began improving because when you're easy with yourself, you'll be easier with other people too. You know, you'll forgive them more easily as well. So that, that could be something to contemplate. Uh, let's take a look at the full moon. Full moon is happening in Libra in Chitra Nakshatra on the 19th of April. So this is happening full moon here in your seventh house on the 19th of April and it's in Libra. So I had a note here to look back on the picture of your life so far. If your life were a painting, and this is this beautiful Venus-Mercury conjunction, it's really getting me thinking in an artistic way. You know, if you can look back on the picture of your life so far, it's a painting, believe me. And you've got people painted in there, you've got work painted in there, you've got all kinds of things painted in there. You've got your home, you know, how you look, how you feel. It's all painted in there. And you, you're painting it. So how do you like the look of that painting? What do you want to change, you know? And this is a really nice thing to be contemplating at this time. So Aries Moon, I think I'm going to leave it there, but it's, it's looking like a pretty good month. Um, this is go time, this is show time. This is the year is beginning, especially on the 14th of April onwards. We've all got to go, go, go. So, but there are the, the notes about being careful. So it, 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 yes, we're, you know, and especially for you, you're going forward, but with, with a little bit of caution here and there, right? Um, some of the signs are very lucky and I'm going to be telling them that, you know, uh, some, some different things. But for you, there is a little bit of caution. So just take care as you go along um, this month, there is Moon. So thank you so much for stopping by. We are now going to welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever it is that you are. Uh, today we're going to have a look at... Three, well, one's a conjunction, but three kind of major planetary events. And then we're going to have a look at the moon dates. So first off, we're going to have a look at sun in the 12th house. Now for you, uh, for all of us, on the 14th of April, sun moves into the 12th house. For all of us, sun moves into Aries. My apologies. For you specifically... The sun moves into Aries, which for you is in the 12th house. Got to be precise on these things. Uh, 14th of April. This happens 14th of April onwards. What's the deal with that? How is that going to impact you? Okay, you might find it hard to sleep at that time, right? With the sun being in your 12th house, very often that's because that's a bright, illuminating energy. People who have sun in the 12th house can find it hard to sleep. So that's something to be mindful of, and that's during April. Um, there's also a note for you to check on spending, especially if you're traveling, you don't want to spend too much and that can so easily happen. Uh, I know what that's like. And you stay at a hotel and then by accident you do something and they put an extra $30 on your bill or whatever. And you're like, ah, oh. so, uh, be careful about extra expenses. Mars in the first. So now you have Mars in the first and that is continuing throughout the entire month. Um, Again, this is just a note of caution with finances. Uh, not the best time for business or starting something major that's new. So if you've started something 
before, or let's say you scribble down an idea, of course you can do it. You can put energy into it and you can make it happen. So, But if you're wanting to start something absolutely brand new that's going to need good Mars energy, you might want to delay it a little bit uh, if that works in your favour. But, I mean, really, it's just... I think overall, I think the main message for you guys is be careful with expenses and business, yeah, or starting something new. Now let's take a look at Venus-Mercury conjunction happening in the 11th, and that's 16th April onwards. This is fantastic. I'm so glad that you have this because your Sun and Mars aren't offering you the most exciting of things. This is great. Both are very happy to be here, Venus-Mercury. This is a terrific time. So great time to spend with friends, great time uh, to be creative. Venus-Mercury, it's the artist combination, absolutely beautiful. Artistic pursuits will flourish and do beautifully at this time. Yeah, be creative, share, share things on social media, share digital things, and definitely enjoy time with friends. Singles, you might want to get out and mingle, great time to meet someone. So that's really beautiful energy there for you. So you got some nice stuff. Tune into Venus and Mercury. Those are your power planets this month. Uh, let's have a look. New Moon. New Moon's happening in Pisces in Revati Nakshatra, 5th of April. For you, that's happening in your 11th house. So this is a great time to plant a seed regarding your spirituality. Uh, and that's in connection with your 11th house. So it could be... And it could be in connection with hopes, dreams and wishes and that kind of thing. So if you could have a spiritual superpower, what would that be? That's something for you to contemplate. And now you don't have to think of anything too extravagant. It, your spiritual superpower could be something as simple as you got the 11th house here. So it could be, um, I want to be good at forgiving my friends. Or, you know, I, I want to... I want to view everyone in the world as my friend or, or something like that. It's something sweet and simple and nice and that's achievable, you know. Uh, so that could be a nice thing to wish for, a seed to plant, something to think about. And then you've got the full moon happening in your sixth house. That's Libra, Chitra and Nakshatra on the 19th of April. So this is really about looking back on the picture of your life so far. So if your life is a painting... You know, you've got your family there, you've got your friends, and, and sixth house, you've got your career. Look back on the, specifically for you, the picture of your career. What does that look like? Do you like it? Do you love it? You know, you're painting it. How do you want to change it? You know, you're in charge. You, you can make some changes here. So in terms of review, that full moon, you want to be looking back on your career and you want to be thinking, is this what I want to be doing for the next two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years? you know, however long it is. So that's definitely something to contemplate there, Taurus moon. So it's not looking like a bad month. It's looking pretty good. Uh, there's some mixed energy, but you're definitely tuned into Venus and Mercury. Beautiful energy for you there. So anything to, related to Venus or Mercury, that'll be, that'll be good for you to enjoy. So Taurus moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Gemini moon. Gemini moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to have a look at three, uh, I want to say planets, but the last one's a conjunction. So we're going to have a look at three astrological phenomena in particular, and then we're going to have a look at the moon dates. So the first thing I want to talk about is sun in your 11th house. So sun is going to be in Aries in your 11th house. Now that's from the 14th of April onwards. And oh my goodness, this is beautiful for you. This is fantastic exalted sun basically because it's Aries but it's exalted sun in your 11th house this is a sensational sun you are very lucky because not everyone's getting one of these you've got it you've, I've got a note here you've hit the jackpot yes this is very good um this is excellent great for games great for time with friends expanding your business expanding you know finances health should feel really good great time to travel Beautiful energy here, Gemini Moon. So that, apologies, Gemini Moon. The camera got cut, as it does. So I think I was talking about your beautiful exalted sun in your 11th house, which is absolutely fantastic. Great for games, time with friends, expanding business, finances, health, travel, everything. Just everything. Amazing with your sun. Uh, Mars is not so happy, though. Mars in your 12th house. Okay, so there could be... 
And so this is all to be weighed up, right? You might you might have a really strong sun. You might resonate with the sun really well. Your Mars might be stronger. You might resonate more with Mars. Mars might affect you. So we've got Mars in your 12th house has been there, is going to keep being there for all of April. Um, body aches, hard to sleep. Uh, travel might not feel fruitful, right? Um it's also important how you speak to family members and co-workers as well with this placement. So, yeah, tune into the sun though. Tune into the sun and just honour the sun silently in your head. Do a sun salutation. If you know yoga, do that every morning. Uh, I've started doing my sun salutations again in the morning and it's fantastic. And I'm doing that because Aries... Is, you know, sun is going to be exalted in Aries. It's coming, you know, the, the new year is here. So uh, it's really exciting. So, and I tend to think it doesn't matter where all these things are placed. If you want to tune into it, you can take advantage of it. That I do believe in that a lot. Um, let's have a look here. So we've got Venus Mercury in your 10th house, 16th April and onwards. Mercury is strong here. So Venus is not so happy to be in the 10th. Venus would rather be out shopping and having fun, but Mercury is great here. So let logic lead the way uh, and you might find some growth here in your income and career. It could be fantastic for that. So, but let the logic side of you really lead the way this month um, in order to capitalize on that. Let's take a look at new moon dates and full moon dates. So we've got the new moon in your 10th house. That's happening in Pisces in Revati Nakshatra on the 5th of April. So this is a great time to plant a seed regarding your spirituality. And you could ask yourself the question, if you could have a spiritual superpower, what would that be? And for you, this is happening in your 10th house. So it could be a, a spiritual superpower in relation to your work right if if you could and, and what what could that be like what could that look like you might want you just might want the divine to help you help empower you as a leader you might want the divine to help make you a brilliant public speaker or something like that um i, I yeah i could do with wishing for that because I would, I would love to be a fearless speaker where i don't need notes look at me i got notes and uh you know i like having my notes i need my notes but who knows maybe one day maybe i need to wish for this actually that's a good one um in connection with work so a super spiritual a spiritual superpower i keep messing that up a spiritual superpower in relation to your work so that's something to wish for right so that's a new moon on the 5th of April. Let's take a look at the full moon on the 19th of April, which is happening in your fifth house in Libra, Chitra Nakshatra. So this is a time to look back on the, the picture of your life. Let's say it's a painting. And I want you to really visualize that, that your life is a painting. And I'm doing this because of Venus and Mercury conjunction here. It's so beautiful. And they're the artist and Chitra Nakshatra painting the picture of your life. Right? See it as a painting. And how does it look to you? You're creating it, right? And especially with the fifth house here, this is very creative energy. So you're look at that painting and it's got you and it's got your family and it's got um, you know your workplace and maybe the country where you live or your home or whatever. Picture that scene. Are you happy with that painting? You're painting it. You can change it, right? So this is that full moon, it's a culmination of of your life and looking back on the picture of your life so far I just think this is a really nice nice thing to be contemplating so Gemini moon it's a it's a bit of a mixture here but you've got a fantastic sun not everybody's having as good a sun as you are right so um, do enjoy that that beautiful sunshine energy and uh, I really wish you well this month Gemini moon so thank you so much for joining we are going to welcome Cancer moon Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now today we're going to have a look at three placements in particular. We're also going to have a look at new moon date and we're going to have a look at the full moon dates. So you have got sun in the 10th house. Uh, that's happening in Aries. Exalted sun in your 10th house. This is fantastic. Oh, 
you are one of the lucky ones, Cancer Moon. I'm very happy for you. So now this is happening 14th April onwards. So you've got an exalted sun in your 10th house. This is excellent. Great time for games. Great time for business. Uh, great time to excel. Great time with family. Great health. Great energy. This is beautiful. I'm so happy for you, Cancer Moon. Look at that. You've even got a... You've got a fantastic... This is good. You've got a great Mars transit. Not everyone's getting this. Oh, I'm very happy for you. Uh, yes, I remember this as I was doing my notes yesterday. So Mars in the 11th. This is a continuation. Mars is going to be there all month. This is a fantastic transit for you. Wow, wow. This is great. So powerful for health, business. Business is going to be great. Uh, now is the time to network. Now is the time to grow your career. Put your foot on the accelerator when it comes to work and career and your life and the direction of where you want to go. Put that foot on the accelerator and go, 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 go. Just enjoy this. This is great energy for you. I'm really, really happy. And you've got, look at that, you've got Saturn in your sixth house there with, all right, look, it's there with Ketu. I know, it's that, that's not brilliant, but um, it's not bad. And I've got a note here, perhaps a time of materializing spiritual downloads. Um, say, for example, in connection with work, service in the world, uh, what you do, your career. This is great career energy, Cancer Moon. Now is the time for you to... Um, you can build, you can prosper. I'm not giving this message to everybody, so good on you. This is time to use this. Uh, Venus Mercury, let's have a look at what's happening here. So Venus Mercury in the ninth house, 16th April onwards. These guys are making their presence here, and uh, Venus is really strong here. So this is a great time to spend with your partner. This could be a time, could be a time to meet somebody even, why not? Um, great for long-distance travel and great for education as well. So you've got really beautiful energies happening here. Let's take a look at New Moon, ninth house. Um, it's happening for you, the New Moon, in, in your ninth house. This is happening in Pisces, in Revithi Nakshatra, on the 5th of April. So this is a great time to plant a seed regarding your spirituality. And I'm asking everybody in relation to this New Moon, if you could have a spiritual superpower, what would it be? And this is the time to wish for that. So because it's happening in your ninth house, maybe you want to be wishing, well, maybe, it's, maybe you want to wish for the most amazing guru of your life. Maybe you want to meet someone in person. Maybe you want to travel to someone. Maybe you want to, um, maybe you want, you know, maybe you're in a bookstore and maybe you're just like, please divine, give me the book I need to read right now. And then you just go to the bookshelf and then the one that you pull out, boom, that's the one you need to read. I've done that a few times. It's fantastic. Um, this is a really nice new moon. So I hope you enjoy that new moon. Now we've got a full moon happening uh, Libra, Chitra Nakshatra, 19th of April. That's happening in your fourth house. So this is really the time to look back on the picture of your life so far. You know, it's a painting and you're painting it, right? We've got Venus Mercury energy there, the artist. So you're painting this beautiful painting. For you, it's the fourth house. So this is this is your home. You know, maybe it's a painting of your home. Do you like it? Do you love it? Where do you want to live? What, you know, this is a, it's a culmination. It's a full moon. It's time to review. It's time to review and look back. What have I created in my life so far? What kind of a home have I created for myself so far? You know, and do I want it to be different in the future? It's just time to gently contemplate those things. So Cancer Moon, you're going to have a cracker of a time, I hope. Uh, and, and, you know, feel free to, to, to put a comment and, and let me know how it goes if you like. But I'm, I'm seeing good things for you. So Cancer Moon, I'm going to wish you well. Uh, I'm going to wish you all the best. And now we're going to welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now today I'm going to take a look at three placements in particular. Uh, and then we're going to look at the new moon and the full moon. So let's take a look at your sun. Sun is, so yes, we've got sun in Aries, which is exalted, but for you it's happening in the ninth house, and this is 14th April onwards. So I've just got a little note here, be careful at work. Um, be careful with power struggles of any kind. Be careful of power struggles with people in authority, seniors, those kind of people. Watch your spending, especially if you're traveling, right? Uh, Mars in the 10th house, 
This is a continuation energy. This has been going on and it goes on for that whole month of April. So don't get into any power struggles at work again. Uh, yes, Mars here. Though, I mean, look, Mars in the 10th does well also. It's not, it's not terrible. Um, it's just the transit isn't so good. So, yeah. I've got a note here. Rain back the ego. Foot off the accelerator pedal. Be polite to those around you. Sure, yeah. Just maybe this is a time to just... Um, just be a bit careful with all that kind of thing. Uh, Venus Mercury is conjunct in your eighth house and that's from the 16th April onwards. So both are strong here. Oh, well, this is beautiful. So this is great times to spend with your partner, great time to spend with your family, your in-laws, you know, um, great on the personal front. So money, money's not great with the sun and Mars. You're going to want to watch your spending. But I think money is good when it comes to your personal life and when it comes to family matters, in-laws, other people's money. Uh, so there is good money here for you, but just not career money is not ideal or, or this um, expenditures. You want to be careful about expenditures because sun can kind of burn up the cash, you know. So, um, but nice Venus and Mercury energy, that's fantastic. So I'm really happy you've got some good news in there. Now, lucky you, I've got a note here, you've got Rahu in the 11th. So how are you doing with the Rahu? Uh, I know that we've shifted, right, as of 23rd, if you're a true node person, 7th, if you're a mean node person. Um, how are you doing with your Rahu? You can feel it now. Can you feel it now? Are you feeling it? Uh, I hope you're feeling it. And if you're not feeling it now, you will in a few weeks. Remember, it's about a year and a half transit. So sometimes you feel it in the lead up. Sometimes you feel it a little bit after that switch. So um, just check in there with, with how that's working. Now we've got a new moon happening uh, in your eighth house. And that's Pisces Ravithi Nakshatra on the 5th of April. This is a great time to plant a seed regarding your spirituality. And I'm saying to everybody, ask yourself the question, if you could have any spiritual superpower, what would it be? Now, this is happening in your 8th house. So, oh my God, you can wish for cool stuff, Leo Moon. You can wish for um, psychic ability. You could wish for... Um, any sort of occult sort of thing maybe you want to be great at astrology maybe you want to um yeah i like the psychic thing though maybe you want to read people's minds sure but you this is a time to plant a seed and wish for something so i i will leave that with you um full moon let's have a look at full moon which is in libra chitra nakshatra on the 19th of april uh, and that's happening in your third house so this is a time to really look back at the picture of your life so far you know pretend that you're painting a painting and we've got venus mercury conjunction happening here so there's a good time to do all of this if your life was a painting how do you like it you know you're painting it you're holding that paintbrush do you like what you're making you know, and it's it's a, this is a time with this full moon to review that on the 19th of April. So you're going to be reviewing the picture of your life and how it looks to you. You know, and through that review, you might get some ideas to set some new things in motion going forward. So Leo Moon, I want to thank you so much for stopping by and we are going to welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now today we're going to take a look at three major placements. And we're also going to have a look at the new moon and the full moon. So we've got the sun uh, on the 14th of April is moving into your eighth house. So yes, we've got sun exalted in Aries. Sure, that's fantastic. But for you, it's in your eighth house. So 14th April onwards, you might want to be careful with opposition. You might want to be careful with finances. You might want to be careful any issues to do with your spouse and also health as well. So you want to keep an eye on some of these things. Mars in the ninth house. This is a continuation energy. It's happening all through April. Um, obstacles on your way up work-wise. Yeah, you might be kind of wanting to press ahead work-wise, but you're getting obstacles. And it can be a bit of that sort of stop-start type energy happening there. That can be frustrating. Mars gets very frustrated when he's not able to just go, go, go. So um, you want to watch that. Uh, watch out how you are around seniors at work. That's going to be important. Um, yeah, there's this feeling that you want to you want to go, but something's holding you back. Something's blocking you. Something like along those lines. 
Now, okay, so you don't, this is, I don't have a huge amount of good news for you here. <laughs> Other signs are you, you tune into Cancer Moon, they're having a great time. <laughs> but um, it's funny, when I, when I write all the notes for these, I tend to, sometimes I get like a chart envy, I'm kind of like, oh, or moon envy, I'm kind of like, oh, I wish I was that one. Uh, right, now for you guys, yes, Venus Mercury energy happening in your seventh house, there's a conjunction happening in your seventh house, 16th April onwards neither a hugely strong here so I don't have too much wonderful stuff to report um, love life may not feel so good if you're in a relationship so just say less you know it, it, it may be that's something you need to do uh, 16th April onwards um, speak less yeah and be careful with communications yeah absolutely um, and, and business too you know that can be career and business as well with the seventh house there let's take a look at some fun stuff we do have fun stuff we do have good stuff we've got the new moon happening uh in your seventh house it's pisces ray with the nakshatra 5th of april this is a beautiful time to plant a seed regarding your spirituality so new moon we get to plant a seed and we get to wish for it to grow now i'm saying that this seed is something around a spiritual superpower so i want to ask you this question if you could have a super a spiritual superpower what would it be right and this is happening in your seventh house indeed it is so what are we going to think there seventh house this could be a spiritual superpower regarding how you handle others regarding here's one it could be that you know my spiritual superpower is that i am always divinely guided to win-win solutions because seventh house win-win right so I'm liking that a lot that's nice that's a nice thing to wish for um, anything to do with the seventh house maybe you want your spiritual superpower to be I want to have a smooth marriage you know I want to I want to be or I want to attract a great partner I, I want to be the right partner for my partner or you know you could you could have some spiritual superpower there maybe your spiritual superpower you just want to be great at forgiveness I want to be great at forgiveness, you know. Divine, please help me be, be better at forgiving. Uh, and let's take a look at the full moon. So what's coming to a culmination here? So we've got Libra, Chitra Nakshatra, 19th of April. And that's happening for you in your second house. So this is a time to look back on the painting or the picture of your life. And that picture, it's, you're painting it. We've got Venus and Mercury conjunction there. You're painting this beautiful painting. And... How do you like it? And for you, it's happening in the second house. So this is to do with your family. So picture a painting with you and your family there. How does that feel to you? You know, and this is a time, full moon, you're just observing. You're just looking at the culmination of what is. How does it feel? And are there any changes you might want to make or, you know, set into motion later on? Um you know, and it could be to do with looking at the picture of your life. If you live alone and you, you haven't got much family, maybe you're looking at the stuff in your house, second house, you know, it's kind of like you could be looking at all your stuff or your collections or um, things that you own as well, you know. So that's that's really quite interesting, Virgo Moon. Um, but definitely that thing of looking back on the picture of your life, you're holding the paintbrush, how do you like it? And how what what do you want to give rise to in the future so Virgo Moon I'm going to leave you with that I hope you have a really great month and I'm going to welcome Libra Moon Libra Moon welcome thank you so much for joining now today we're going to take a look at three placements in particular uh, and we're going to have a look at the new moon and the full moon as well so Sun in the seventh house yes Sun is in Aries and it's exalted but for you it's happening in the seventh house that's from the 14th of April onwards. Um, opposition at work could be stronger here uh, because of the house placement. You, you could have some benefits as well. I mean, sun is exalted in Aries, you know, but in terms of what might not be happening well with this sun, could, could face some opposition at work. Expenses might be higher. Remember, the sun likes to burn burn up the cash, likes to spend the money. Uh, so expenses could be higher in particular in relation to could be in relation to your spouse, could be in relation to your business. Um, it's time to look after your health and your spouse's health as well. And this is not particularly great for travel. So do consider that. Uh, and that's 
not great for work related travel with the seventh house there but then you've got Mars in the eighth so it's interesting that you could have some good time traveling with your family right but work related travel I would say not so much with the sun in the seventh house there um, Mars in the eighth now that's a continuation that's happening all month and um, this is not great health wise you might want to preserve your energy you might want to rest a bit you might want to or you might want to put in an exercise routine that's going to energize you and that's not going to drain you just a little bit of exercise just like five or ten minutes a day just something regular uh, and as I say good time possibly for travel with family so that could be good there Let's have a look at Venus Mercury conjunction. It's happening in the sixth house from the 16th of April onwards. And we're looking at Mercury is pretty strong here. This is really nice. Um, I've got to note let your intellect and logic lead the way at work. Uh, and hopefully, business and career should improve. So that's looking pretty nice there. That's a nice energy for you to tune into. You're very lucky. You've got your Saturn third from the moon. So yes, there's going to be Ketu conjunction happening at the same time, but perhaps you're materializing because Ketu's there. Maybe you're materializing spiritual courage. Um, and of course, you can look at my Ketu Saturn video, which I did um, however long ago I did that. Uh, so let's have a look. You've got new moon happening in the sixth house. You've got a full moon happening in the first house. So let's take a look at the new moon. That's happening 5th of April in Pisces, Revati Nakshatra. And this is just a really great time to plant a seed regarding your spirituality. So as with everybody, I've been asking them the question, if you could have a spiritual superpower, what would it be? Now for you, it's happening in the sixth house. So maybe your spiritual superpower is something about you helping others. Maybe it's some service to the world. Maybe you're, you're asking the divine, please guide me to... Um, you know, what it is I'm really meant to be doing in the world? How am I meant to serve people? How am I meant to, how can I help? That's a beautiful prayer right there, you know. How can I help? How can I be of greater assistance? Um, that could be really nice. I think that's going to be a lovely new moon. Then we've got the full moon happening in your first house. And that's Libra, Chitra Nakshatra, 19th of April. So this is a time really to look back on the picture of your life so far so if your life is a painting how does it look to you and this is your first house this is all about you this is about you you might paint your family in there you might see your career just paint your life and have this feeling of it's this culmination of looking back at the painting of your life and this is your life this is what you filled it with you're holding the paintbrush Maybe some realizations will happen. Maybe you'll get some realizations of what you want to create going forward. How you want to see that picture change. You know, it, it's just this gentle place of observation, right? Where you're taking a look at your life and you're taking stock. So this is pretty big. It's a big full moon. So Libra moon, I'm going to wish you well with that. 